Before now, I have published a lengthy presentation on blood products transfusion. There, I have gone through the necessary facts that we need to know about all the different products that could be transfused. But not everyone will have the luxury of sitting down for two hours, 55 minutes to listen to that. When you click on this very link, you are going to get that. So if you are in a hurry and you want to know more about alternatives to blood transfusion only, then let's go. But let me say a big thank you for those who have seen my channel for the first time. Please remember to subscribe and remember to pass this presentation to your friends. So, alternative to blood transfusion. Further pieces of information on all the different types of blood products, white blood cells, red blood cells, platelets, plasma, cryoprecipitate, fresh frozen plasma, immunoglobulins, albumins are all here. You can click on this link. Before transfusing any blood product at all, we have to consider the legal aspect of blood transfusion. We will discuss with the patient, the social decision maker, or parents when it's the case involving a child or children generally. So, consent must be signed. And it will be signed after thorough explanation as per the reason or reasons for the transfusion. Also, we need to let the affected individual know that there are alternatives that are available. Or, if there is no alternative at this time, we'll let him or her know, or whoever is taking that decision. The type of blood products to be used and the possible side effects. We must report all transfusion reactions promptly, and we may seek court order, depending on what is obtainable in your jurisdiction. If the parent is not acting in the best interest of the children, or the substitute decision maker is not acting in the best interest of the patient. We could say you no know, court order. Why is the legal aspect so important? Well, because I said this is going to be a short presentation, I will not go into details of that. Just click on this very link. I have explained fully there. Without valid consent, anything we do is battery. Why the need to consider alternatives to blood transfusion? Yoga witnesses will not like to take blood product, and not only that, some patients that are not even Jehovah witnesses may choose not to have blood transfusion. Our substitution maker will say no. So we need to let the patients know, okay, what other things we could do but if we cannot do anything again to salvage the situation, we'll let them know. For further piece of information about what could be scary to them, like transfusion reactions and possible treatment, you can click on this very link and you'll find full info right there. Okay, let me quickly touch on prevention here. Um, this is all about alternatives to blood transfusion, right? So if you don't want any blood products, you can prevent what is preventable because some of these blood products will be required for conditions beyond our own control, right? But some are within our control. Like in the case of accidents, you can prevent accident as much as you can, right? Mm -hmm. But if unfortunately we cannot and it occurs, then let's secure hemostasis because when less blood is lost, we will need less blood or we don't even need any of the blood products. So when we see you know, a vessel bleeding, we should occlude all bleeding vessel or vessels. In fact, even if it is internally, like peptic ulcer disease with bleeding vessels, now, through endoscopy, hemostasis could be secure. And in the case of megaloblastic anemia, secondary to folate or vitamin P12 deficiency, let's guide against the use of alcohol you now frequently because it will impair the absorption of blood. Also, certain medications, you watch against it, like metotrexate in the case of 
not for the deficiency. And we must improve the diet. Okay, diet will help, you know, both folate and vitamin B12. And we can give exogenous vitamin B12 or exogenous folic acid. And that may take care of megaloblastic anemia. So let's prevent what is preventable. That is where I'm going to start this story from. We may go for iron, and we can start with iron fortified foods or any foods rich in iron, like shellfish, beef liver, soya beans, lentils, beans, spinach, kale, flour series, oats, you know, dark chocolate, prunes, and the list goes on. But under what condition? Click on this very link to understand more. It may be supplemental iron that we will go for under what conditions. No, it might be ferrous, sulfate, ferrous gluconate, ferric citrate, or ferric sulfate. It will be taken in a salt or like liquid or a pill in form of capsules or tablet. But people with single cell disease, anemia, people with thalassemia cannot take iron. If you want to know more, click on this very link. It might be iron dextran that we we'll end up using. It's not everyone with low hemoglobin level that will actually get pack red blood cells transfusion. Sometimes we'll choose to go for intravenous iron when they are asymptomatic or they are not decompensating. So that, remember again, not for sickle cell disease patient or people with thalassemia. So you can get dextran but that will give you the worst anaphylaxis. It might be sodium ferric gluconate or erythromycetol. Sucrose will give you least anaphylaxis among iron, you know, that could be given intravenously. It is better to give intravenous iron with erythropoietin in renal failure. Why that? Kidneys are helping us in producing erythropoietin that will help the bone marrow to produce you know, the blood cells. But when the kidney cell is suffering, then erythropoietin level will be down, then there will be chronic anemia. So when you want to correct that, you can give iron and erythropoietin. It is better than oral iron in increasing hemoglobin, meaning intravenous iron is far better when you compare that to you know, per oral iron. Oh, erythropoiesis stimulating agents are also useful, like I've just said a while ago, that kidneys produce erythropoietin needed by the bone marrow in production of blood cells. So when kidney is suffering, like in chronic kidney disease, then the production of erythropoietin will drop. Then it will be faced, will be badly, with a name of chronic disease. So we can have no, erythropoietin replaced using Epres, Anacel, Procrete, Noritacrete, Epogen, erythropoietin generic given as the national unit per kilogram intravenously or subcutaneously. Also, if you don't want blood transfusion and the alternative is that you can have preoperative autologous donation, well, um, I will not waste my time here because that is getting less recognition. So what is this all about? We know in a bit. Now, preoperative autologous donation is all about the patient that would donate his or her own blood for his or her own use in a plan or elective surgery. It is a controversial you know, process, but some are still using it, but Many surgeons don't want that anymore. It's good for people with rare blood you know, types or certain plasma protein deficiencies. Certain criteria must be met, but I will not go into that right now. Certain contraindications and how is it done and any associated complications all could be found here. So you are going to find all the criteria to be met and how is it done? Complications and contraindications. Click on this link, please. Self salvage is another possibility if you don't want to be you know, transfused. So the blood could be collected from you during surgery. 
it will be filtered and washed, then reintroduced into the same patient in the form of autologous transfusion. This could be done both intraoperatively and postoperatively. There are certain medications that could be helpful, like trinizamic acid, vitamin K. Remember, vitamin K dependent clotting factors. Those are factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. And there's more in one villibrand disease that is mine and hemophilia A. Progesterone, remember women, right? Uh huh. Uterine bleeding. Okay. Depending on how massive the bleeding is, and then recombinant activated factor 7 in hemophilia A and B, and this activated factor 7 is also helpful at early stages of the cranial hemorrhage. Okay, in conclusion, transfusion is done every minute worldwide. So, it's nothing new that someone will be transfused with a blood product, be it Pyrrhic blood cells, platelets, leukocytes, like you no know, granulocytes in case of you no know, profound neutropenia, with you no know, granulocyte colony stimulating factor and so on. Transfusion reactions and legal problems are you no know, leading people away. Physicians are worried about legal problems. Patients are worried about transfusion reactions. So these put together and you no. Know, Religion like Jehovah Witness, so many people will then want to opt out of transition of blood product. But I will personally advise that you just you know rehearse with your doctor, let your doctor know exactly how you are feeling. Your doctor will take appropriate measures to be sure that you have less transition reactions. Okay, but if you Want to know more about transfusion reactions and legal issues and the different you know, blood products? I have two hours, 55 minutes presentation right here. You can click on this very link. Lives must be saved. Whether we are saved, you know, the blood products or we go for the alternatives. But I will not make the mistake to round up without letting you know. So, these alternatives have been stated. It is not everybody that could have that benefit because it depends on your situation. No two cases will be you know, exactly similar. With that, discuss with your physician. He or she will guide you appropriately. Thanks for listening. Remember to share this representation. Remember to subscribe to my channel. Don't be too rigid that you don't want blood products. Let that conversation be with you and your physician. I appreciate it.